This week we'll be talking about the formula of a hydrate. The purpose of this lab is first to determine the percentage of water in copper sulfate pentahydrate, and the second is to calculate the waters of crystallization for an unknown hydrate. Just some background on what a hydrate is. It is a solid that contains a fixed number of water molecules in its structure. And then you have probably heard of desiccants. Um, you can see those packets. They're usually in your shoes or a bag that you purchase, like a book bag or a purse or something. So that's just the form of a hydrate that doesn't have any water. So we call that an anhydrous salt. So an means like without and then hydrous, so without water. Um, so these are comfortable being a hydrate. So when you take the water out of them, they're really good to use for moisture um, absorption in the products that you buy. So that's why you see these packets, just to absorb the moisture that could be present and could build up in those products. So the um, known hydrate that we're going to use in the lab is copper sulfate pentahydrate. It looks like this um, blue, pretty solid. And you can see by the structure here, so the copper molecules are um, orange, and then the sulfur is yellow, um, and the oxygens are red, and the hydrogens are gray. So you can see that you have your copper orange bound to a sulfate, which is S uh, sulfur and four oxygen molecules. And then you can see all of these water molecules that are just incorporated into the structure. So it looks a little deceiving in this picture, but the water molecules aren't actually bound to um, the copper sulfate, but they're just um, associated in the molecule. So that's where you get the hydrate from, where you have all of this water in the solid um, just present. So you can see this um, dot that's in the middle of this molecular formula. And you may be thinking, is that a multiplication sign? Because that is commonly what that looks like. But this is actually just telling you that there are five water molecules um, in that crystalline structure. So this is um, just making the distinction that you're not binding to water. Um, you're just associated with water. So that's what that dot means. It does not mean multiply. It just tells you that there is something associated with your compound. So this is super important to remember because when you want to find the molecular weight of your hydrate, you have to also include the mass of the water since it's incorporated in that structure. So when you're looking at the molecular weight of copper sulfate pentahydrate, you first calculate the molecular weight of copper sulfate, and then you add on the molecular weight of five water molecules. So definitely remember that when you're calculating um, your moles and everything else for your copper sulfate pentahydrate. So the experiment um, that you're going to watch in the video is very simple. We are just going to heat up some hydrate in that crucible setup that you see here for about 10 minutes. Um, and then we, you can weigh the hydrate before and after heating. and the, from that, you can figure out how much water you have in your hydrate. So we'll be doing two trials of this for both the copper sulfate pentahydrate and also for one unknown hydrate. So for the calculations for the copper sulfate pentahydrate, we're trying to find the percentage of water here. So first you want to calculate the theoretical percentage which is just the molar mass of the five water molecules divided by the molar mass of the hydrate itself times 100 will give you the percent. And remember that's theoretical. So that is 
without any actual data being collected, you can say how much um, percentage of water am I supposed to get from my experiment. Then you can calculate the experimentally determined percentage of water based on the masses that you measure in lab. So you can take the mass of the water, divide by the mass of the hydrate, and multiply times 100 to get your percent here. And remember that you need to subtract the mass of the crucible from um, all of the masses that we show you because you don't want um, inc to include the mass of the crucible in your calculations. Then you can find the percent error which, if you remember, is taking the actual percentage or experimental, subtracting um, the theoretical percentage from that, and then dividing that by the theoretical again. And multiply all that times 100, that will give you your percent error. So how close were you to getting the actual um, percentage that should be there? And remember that molar mass comes from the periodic table. Each element has a specific molecular weight, and you can add them all up depending on how much of each element is in the molecule. So um, for the unknown, we want to end up figuring out how many water molecules are in our unknown hydrate. So first we can find out how many moles of water are in our hydrate, which is taking the mass of water and dividing by the molar mass of water. That will give you the number of moles. Next, you can find the moles of the anhydrous salt in the same exact way. Divide the mass by the molar mass. And then you can figure out the mole ratio to get the number of water molecules that are in your hydrate. So you can divide the moles of water by the moles of the salt, and whatever that number is, is your X, um, or the number of water molecules in your hydrate. So just the specifics about the unknown from the video, so you know, we used number one. So I think your report sheet will ask you which unknown so that is number one. And then the molecular weight of the unknown one, anhydrous salt, is 106 grams per mole. So make sure you distinguish that. That is for the anhydrous salt. That is the version without the water. So without the water, the compound weighs 106 grams per mole. So make sure you're aware of these two in your report sheet. So here's just an example problem um, to walk you through what we'll be doing in the video and what you can expect on your notebook and report sheets. First, we'll find the mass of the crucible. These numbers are just made up, so please do not write them in your report sheet. Next, you will find or you'll see the mass of the crucible with the unknown hydrate. So we've added 1.25 grams. Now we have 6.25 grams. Then you can find the mass of your hydrate, simply subtracting the mass of the crucible with the hydrate and take away the mass of the crucible. Next, we will heat the hydrate, as I mentioned before, and then we will weigh the new um, mass of the crucible with the anhydrous salt. So then you can find the mass of your water by subtracting the, you can do this a couple of ways. Um, one of the ways is to subtract the mass of the crucible with the hydrate from the crucible and the anhydrous salt. So you can subtract those two. Um, or you can find the mass of your anhydrous salt by simply taking away the mass of the crucible from the crucible and anhydrous salt. Um, and then you can use that mass of anhydrous salt and subtract it from the mass of the hydrate, and that will also give you mass of water. 
So however you want to do that, there's a couple ways for the mass of the water, whichever you find the easiest. So now that we know all of our masses, we can convert everything to moles so that we can find the numbers of water molecules in our hydrate. So in my made up lab, um, I found that there were 0.19 grams of water. So that corresponds to 0.011 moles of water. And um, I found that there were 1.06 grams of my anhydrous salt. And that corresponds to 0.0037 moles of anhydrous salt. Again, that is not the molecular weight of the unknown that we used in the video. This is just an example problem. So the next step, we can find the lowest whole number ratio between the water and the anhydrous salt. And here I have divided the moles and I see that I get a um, ratio of 2.97 moles of water for every one mole of anhydrous salt. And there is our formula. So I found the number 2.97 and now I can um, put a 3 there for 3 water molecules.